After an action-packed night of racing in the Bull Ring at Elko, Minnesota, the stars of the ARCA Racing Series have moved east. It's a 4th of July weekend sure to be filled with its own brand of fireworks. Just 35 points separate the top two contenders of the chase for this year's championship. The ARCA Racing Series is at historic Winchester Speedway. We're on CBS Sports Network and it's coming your way next. CBS Sports Spectacular is the ARCA Racing Series presented by Menards. We're live at Winchester Speedway in Winchester, Indiana for the Hearst Chase the Taste 200 presented by Calypso Lemonade. Hello again, everyone, and welcome. I'm Rick Benjamin. Andy Hillenberg joins me topside in a couple of moments. Dr. Nick Bergman is with us on Pit Road today. Celebrating 100 years of racing history at this half-mile facility, long regarded as the fastest half-mile in the world. A little later on, ARCA Racing Series standout Spencer Gallagher, not running today, sixth in points. He'll join us topside to talk about the unique challenges of racing here at Winchester. This is the 25th time that the ARCA Racing Series has come to Winchester Speedway. A lot of great drivers have been to Victory Lane here today. This is a difficult, fast, and occasionally dangerous racetrack. Let's find out more. My partner Andy Hillenberg up between turns three and four. Rick, I'm standing out here on the high banks of this 100-year-old facility. Winchester Speedway's reputation is built, built up evenly between respect, speed, bravery, and danger. To compete here for many is a, is a big honor. To win here punches your ticket to racing stardom. And now down to the third member of our team, Dick Bergren. Well, thanks, Andy. Frank Kimmel has been the most successful driver in ARCA history. Ten championships, 80 wins in this series, and he's won here at Winchester six times. Grant Enfinger, well, he's never won here at Winchester. Give him some advice as to what he needs to do to win this race. I think he should go home. You know, it's it's just not really fair for Grant to come out here and do this. And, uh, you know, he's been... He's young and you don't really know what's going on, but uh, now honestly, uh, Grant doesn't need any advice. He's uh, really fast and uh, pretty much dominated everything he's done this year and really, really, really good. So uh, we'll just have to see what we got for him. Hopefully uh, we can keep up with him today. Let's see what he's got for you. Kimmel, very uncharacteristic year. He has only led, led one lap so far this year, hasn't been in the hunt to win, but this is one of his best tracks. What's he got to do? to break out of the slump and win today. Yeah, he, uh, he definitely doesn't need to ask me, so uh, all Frank has to do is do what he's been doing forever. So, uh, and they'll get it turned around, they'll win races this year, so uh, hopefully hopefully we're able to compete with him, and uh, we, we got another hero on the list we need to look at today too, and that's Ken Schrader. He's uh, he's really fast this weekend, but uh, it's just, uh, I, I'm really blessed and really honored to, to be able to run on this track with, with two of my heroes in Frank and Kenny. Thanks to both of you. We wish you to run all day, every lap. Thank you. What a treat to have Dr. Dick Bergen with us on these broadcasts of the ARCA Racing Series presented by Menards here at Winchester Speedway. Nashville recording artist Lucy Angel helping entertain the big crowd here at Winchester before we get going. We'll come right back on CBS Sports Network. I got a pistol and I got a bullet and a pistol. ARCA Racing Series on CBS Sports Network is being brought to you by Menards. Save big money at Menards on all your home improvement needs. By Calypso Lemonade. Naturally flavored lemonades produced with pure cane sugar, natural flavors, and real lemon bits. And by Ansel. Ansel protects. Welcome back live to Winchester Speedway, Winchester, Indiana, celebrating 100 years of racing here, also celebrating Independence Day 2014. Coming up in a moment, the Hearst Chase the Taste 200, presented by Calypso Lemonade, qualifying here yesterday evening, and great veteran Kenny Schrader takes the Menards Poll Award, presented by Anzel. It's Kenny's first of the season. He continues as ARCA's oldest career poll winner. With Kenny right now is Dr. Dick Burton. Thanks, Rick. Ken Schrader has been the fastest man here since the ARCA cars arrived, won both of the practice sessions, won the pole with a new track record. When they drop the green flag, you're going to have a 17-year-old kid on the outside of you, and he's braver than brave can be. Who's going to beat who into turn two? Uh, well, I'm not really much worried about turn two, first off. You know, maybe turn two, lap 199. You know, we got a long way to go, but the uh, car's been real good. Not the car we wanted to bring, but the one we ran uh, last year quite a bit, or that I drove all the time. 
and uh, we'll just have to see. But boy, what a good young talent we got back there, and uh, we'll just try to keep them back there. 37 degree banks here in Winchester, steepest of any track. How fast does it feel out there? Well, I hadn't been here in a number of years, and when I smoked, when I smoked down in there yesterday, I said, "Woo, wow, yeah, that's pretty quick." So uh, it's it's a lot of fun. Wish you good luck today. Thank you, Rick. All right, thank you, Dr. Dick Bergen. What a thrill to have Dr. Dick with us on Pit Road here and coming up in the month of August at Madison International Speedway in Wisconsin when we rejoin you live here on CBS Sports Network. 21 cars ready to go, 200 laps today at Winchester Speedway. And now, ladies and gentlemen, you've been very patient. Thank you much for the most famous words in motorsports here to give the command for today's first Live Life and Flavor 200 presented by Federated Star Care, the national house manager for her foods, Jeremy Shea. Drivers, start your engine. Jeremy Shea from Her Foods, the event sponsor here today, giving the command to drivers to fire the motors. The cars will be rolling off on their pace laps in just a couple of moments. When we come back, the starting lineup for the Hers Chase the Taste 200 on CBS Sports Network. Back live in Winchester, Indiana, Winchester Speedway is where we are on this Sunday afternoon. A bit of racing history right there. Andy Hillenberg, a car driven to two ARCA Racing Series championships by our friend, the late Benny Parsons. Yes, and Benny's, Benny was everyone's friend, and that is uh, so great to see Benny's car here today. It is old-timers weekend here at Winchester. If you like old race cars, this has been the place to be the last couple of days. Our starting lineup on the inside, the Federated Auto Parts Chevrolet from Fenton, Missouri, the great veteran Kenny Schrader. He actually chooses the outside. Poll winners get that opportunity at these events. Young Brandon Jones will start inside now. Row number one, that is the Ream Chevrolet, the XI Turner Scott Motorsports car. Anderson Bowen back with us from Swanee, Georgia, driving the 77 for the Cunningham team. That's a Dodge. And John West Townley, young veteran on the outside. That is the Zaxby's Toyota from the Venturini team. Mason Mitchell starts in the fifth spot in the 98. Has led the points a chunk this year, but has given the lead back up to Grant Enfinger, who starts behind him. Justin Boston, who won at Toledo, outside that row. Enfinger and Kyle Weatherman making his first start of the year. Fifth row, young J.J. Haley on the pole. We were with you at Elko two weeks ago. Frank Kimmel alongside from Clarksville, Indiana. The 10-time series champion winner here a year ago. Last couple of rows here at Winchester Speedway. Now our weather today, Andy Hillenberg, this has been a bit of a story. We've had a few uh, little rain showers off and on today. Yeah, quite a surprise, Rick. And, uh, I mean, it was supposed to be sunny, hot. I know everybody was nervous about that right front tire in the wear, but uh, it's cooled off a little bit. And when it's cool, it'll be a little tighter here. Probably. Faster, faster. Faster, which is what we like to see, no question about it. Now, for those of you new to the ARCA Racing Series presented by Menards, we'll talk a little bit about what this series comprises. 20 events on the calendar. This is race number 10. A series 58 years old now. Oh, gosh, make it 61 years old as we do the arithmetic a little bit better. Only racing series nationwide, super speedways and short tracks, road courses and dirt. It's a great place for young drivers to work their way up because they get a taste of everything. They get a race against some of America's best, Kenny Schrader, Frank Kimmel, measure up their talent and uh, in hopes of moving on. Uh, this is a great proving ground for the young drivers, and it's a great place for the old guys to stay and be a part of a professional racing series. As we talked about at Elko, there's a 10-tire rule in effect. You start with four brand-new Hoosier radials on these cars. You get six tires to change later in the day. Yeah, and I, I expect guys to change two on the first pit stop, uh, providing the cautions fall you know, in a, in a normal fashion, so to speak and then saving those four tires uh, for probably 50 laps to go to really try to put it on them at the end. And it all depends, of course, on how the caution periods fall in this one. We had five here one year ago. Frank Kimmel, the defending race winner, six career victories here. But Kimmel hasn't really, we, we heard about it a little from Dr. Dick Berggren in the open of our show. Uh, he hasn't really gotten going yet this year. This is the onboard camera. We've got four different looks here today. The 22 car will carry one of our cameras. That is Austin Wayne Self from Austin, Texas. The 55, the Jags car of Cody Coughlin. This is the 90 of points leader Grant Enfinger. We'll start uh, a little further back than we're used to seeing. And the 98 car of Mason Mitchell from West Des Moines, Iowa will carry one of our onboard looks today as well. That's the Musselman's TTS Ford. Safety car is in at Winchester. 200 laps of action coming your way. Schrader in the white 52 car on the outside pole. Young Brandon Jones from Atlanta, Georgia on the inside of row number one. That's a Turner Scott car. Very good race team. And the green flag is in the air. Glad to have you with us at Winchester, and we are underway. 
Great start for Kenny Schrader there going up through the gears already pulled out to lead on the backstretch Rick Schrader Brandon Jones John West Townley and Toledo winner Justin Boston your first four trying to keep these tires Oh, tangle up in turn four Anderson Bowen is in the wall Justin Boston got a piece of that and we've got a caution flag immediately as we complete one lap Josh Williams down on pit road and we'll take a look see if we can see I think that might be young Kyle Weatherman and the Rulo brothers for the 17 car what a tough break nowhere to go there for Kyle uh, they just got all bottled up coming off turn four take another look at it as the leaders arrow down in there well we're not seeing the replay we were hoping there's part of it there's Weatherman in the 17 with a window yeah, net window down and Anderson down. Bowen in the 77 tangled up so we've got a caution immediately. Now the caution laps do count, of course. So one lap goes up on the board, and Schrader will be the restart leader. Here's another look at what really happened. You can see John West Townley slip yep. a little bit there. And he, that checked up Justin, and, and okay, the 77 got up into the 17 and just took off and then got those two pinched in the wall. Here's an onboard look for you. This is from Grant Enfinger's on board leader. camera. Oh, near miss here for Grant. Good job getting around there. Frank sneaks around as well. So Anderson Bowen and his Cunningham Dodges return to the ARCA Racing Series. Won't even complete one lap. Let's get more from Pit Road, our good friend Dr. Dick Berger. Well, listening on the standard, and Bowen said, I just got right reared. Wow. So Anderson Bowen apparently got some help, and that seemed to be the car kind of shot up the racetrack. Yeah, here. he shot, just turned right and collected the 17. So Anderson Bowen will try to roll the 77 on the pit road. They'll see if they can get that car perhaps able to make some laps here. More to come when we return to Winchester. The 16 year old Anderson Bowen climbs out of his car and Kyle Weatherman is here and we have a conversation going on between the two drivers. Listen. I did. I would I would love to talk about that guy. Where's the line? I didn't come up. I, I didn't was go below the line. line. I was below the left line. No, you My were left not. eye was you on the line. You were in the middle, I was on the high groove and you I came was up. on the bottom. What the fuck? Well, you had a great practice, started in the third position, your version. I know I feel like I was just we didn't get the start we needed to, and uh, I was on the bottom, on the bottom lane. And uh, it's just felt like he just kind of came down and got in our right rear, and we just kind of went up to the top and just kind of all the way went, went to the right wall and just just hard day on the team. Just not like how we wanted to, to finish the race like that. Just the guys worked their, their butts off the whole weekend, so, you know, it's hard to it's hard to finish a race like this. If some improper language got out on the air, we apologize for that. Anderson Bowen frustrated, Kyle Weatherman more frustrated. Andy, you know what it's like. You've raced these cars a long time. You're a past champion. You wait all year for your first run of the year like Kyle Weatherman. You don't even make a lap. You put all your heart and soul into this and, and to get it taken away before you even have an opportunity to show what you have. I mean, Kyle Weatherman last year came here as a 15-year-old youngster, led the race finished second behind Frank Kimmel a great afternoon and had even higher expectations today. Tough break to see two good cars here behind the wall this early. Absolutely and the teams involved may try to straighten those cars out a little see if they can get them back out uh, at least make some laps and perhaps collect some championship points at least on the owner's side here but a tough way to start the afternoon still under caution first yellow of the day for that incident exiting turn four. And as we get set for a restart Dr. Dick Berger with Kyle Wellerman your side of the story. You know, it, it, I, I don't know, to be honest, it was it all happened so fast, you know, uh, you know, but it, it's just stupid. It really is. This is on lap one. I, I, actually, we haven't made a lap yet, and uh, all this fell out. You know, it's 200 laps. We had plenty of time. Uh, I was on the outside of the 77. You know, restart's a good spot to get, get spots and everything, and I, that's what I was doing on the outside of the 77, and, and he just came up, uh, you know, and, and I, we both got the bad story. Uh, this is lap one, and I'm wrecked. He's done. You know, it just, uh, it really sucks. It really does. Well, we wish you better luck next time. Thank you. All right, so Kyle Weatherman making his second start of the year. Here's another look at what happened. See, this is Justin Boston, and uh, the 77 just got sent up the racetrack. Yeah, they, they got jammed up there with the, the 15 and 25, made a little bit of contact and got jammed up, and I think guys started hitting their brakes, and, uh, you know, contact was made, and cars uh, careening not in the direction they wanted to go. Exactly, and as hard as it is to get to one of these events to qualify well, which both Weatherman uh, and Anderson Bowen especially did Bowen starting up in third spot to have your day end that early 
uh, very, very frustrating. Justin Boston, our winner at Toledo earlier this season, there's some damage to the Zaloop 25 out of the Venturini shops. They've got Bear Bond on the left rear corner of that car. They'll send Justin back out, but he has undoubtedly missed a couple of laps at this point as well. So uh, he will be a couple of laps down, it appears, when we get set to go green in just a couple of moments. Still no indication. Lights are still on the safety car. A lot of oil dry down up at the exit of 4 and 80. That's a tough place on this racetrack. That's probably the trickiest part of the racetrack, Rick. They're racing two, three wide sometimes through that corner. They've got to narrow up and get back single file on the straightaway to be quick. They can run down the straightaway double file, but they don't get that preferred line into turn one. So it gets congested. Now we got a little bit of speedy dry there to, to make the degree of difficulty a little bit more. <laughs> As if they needed that here at Winchester Speedway. Now we talked in our at the top of the broadcast about how fast this place is, all the history here, and how difficult this can be. We're right on board today with championship leader Grant Enfinger, four of nine so far this year. Wins the opener at Daytona, a restrictor play track. He's won three of the four short track races so far, four total. Just waxed everybody when we were at Elko two weeks ago. Well, Grant has been a very talented driver, and he's had sporadic opportunity over the years. It's neat to see him get with Howard Bixman this year. And, you know, they don't have a ton of good race cars, but they got two really good ones, and they're getting to the racetrack prepared, and, and he's putting on them. Experience and, and his cars, everything's matching up, and this could be Grant's year. We'll see what happens. Enfinger picks up one spot. He started back in seventh, an uncharacteristically slow qualifying effort relatively for Grant Enfinger here today. Green flag should be out next time by. It will be lap number 10 of 200. And hers chase the taste 200 presented by Calypso Lemonade today here in Winchester on the CBS Sports Network. What a thrill to be here with my good friend Andy Hillenberg, Dr. Dick Bergen with us here and uh, coming up in the month of August when we go to Madison International Speedway in Wisconsin for the third of our CBS Sports Spectacular ARCA Racing Series summer events in 2014. So we'll set it up as we did at the start of the show a few moments ago. Ken Schrader, our fast qualifier in that Federated Auto Parts Chevy. He'll take the outside for the restart. The four car, the X-Side machine, that's young Brandon Jones in the Turner Scott Motorsports Chevrolet running a lot of NASCAR K and N events, run a couple of truck series races. Behind him, John West Townley in the Zaxby's Toyota, the 15. And on the outside of row number two, restarting there is Mason Mitchell, who's had a sniff of the points lead earlier this season in the 98 car. He qualified fifth in the Muscleman's TTS Ford. Green flag back in the air, and Winchester we're back underway. And here they go again, Kenny, with another great start. That's a lot of experience right there. Jumps right back into the lead. Mason Mitchell on the outside trying to get by Jones for second spot as they hit turn three. This was the trouble zone just a few moments ago. And finger right there up in fourth spot. Townley fifth. Kimmel now sixth. Austin Wayne South in the 22 car for the Cunningham team in seventh. And we get a green flag lap on the board. And here comes Mason Mitchell on the outside. Wow, that in-car shot that we saw from Grant right there just shows you how fast this racetrack really is. Stuff's moving around. Put a little heat there on Kenny. I thought he'd get away, but he's not. They're all in hot pursuit. On board with Enfinger in the fourth position. Your points leader Kimmel now gets around Townley. So Frank Kimmel back at home at Winchester, where, is he, where he's won six times, including a year ago. He is up into the top five. Wow. On board with Mason Mitchell, meantime, who runs in second spot, trying to track down Schrader. He's taking a peek here and there, trying to let Kenny know that he's there. Kenny being the veteran that he is, it's not really going to affect him much, but Mason wants that lead. Battling for the top two spots. Ken Schrader's led all the way so far. Mitchell in second. Jones is third in the fourth car. Fourth spot is Enfinger. Fifth is Kimmel. Sixth is Townley. Seventh is Self. And here comes a bid for the lead. Mason Mitchell taking a look at the bottom in three. Yeah, he. I, I don't think he can complete the pass there it was as well as Kenny is running. But I think this, the youthfulness and enthusiasm, <laughs> he's going to keep trying it. You've got youthful exuberance here on the part of Mitchell and especially on the part of the fourth guy and Brandon Jones. He's got old age and maybe a little treachery. He was yeah. straight <laughs> Absolutely. Kenny's won here. I remember seeing him win here uh, in the, uh, the late 70s. That's how long Kenny's been coming and winning here at Winchester. You have raced open wheel cars here, as has Schrader, and it's a whole different scenario when you're running a, a 700 horsepower tire that weighs 1,400 pounds, but just making laps at Winchester is so key, isn't it? Oh, it is. I, I, and the what you get with the speed and now they're, as they're coming up on lap traffic, stuff starts happening even faster. I mean, regardless of what kind of car you're in here, 
it's fast. i board here with Austin Wayne Self out of Austin, Texas in the 22 car, one of the Cunningham Dodges. Good three-way battle for position behind the leaders, Enfinger fourth. Self now fifth as he gets by Kimmel and Townley. Frank Kimmel was charging there, and the Menards 44. Back a little further in the 55 car. Back in eighth is young Cody Coughlin, one of the Venturini cars. Really surprised that Frank, uh, he put, as you mentioned, a really good charge in the beginning, and it seems like his car might be falling off a little bit very early in the run. Whether uh, he's saving his equipment, saving his stuff, or actually falling off, we'll just have to wait and see here. On board with Mason Mitchell in the 98, with second place car as he dives into the corner, trying to reel in Kenny Schrader. Lap traffic in front, that's Tommy Schrader in the two car, the DK Lock Chevrolet. Crater drops to the bottom to let the leaders steam by on the high side. Uh, a lot of give and take there by uh, Brandon Jones. A good move. Let Mason Mitchell back in the hole there. It's too early to, to be locking horns on the back straightaway. You've got to get to the finish to have a shot. But here comes Mitchell, hungry for his first career arc to win. Goes to the bottom in four and takes over from Schrader. Oh, beautiful slide job there, Rick. He just kept on going until he knew he had the momentum to clear him, and he did. Brandon, Brandon Jones, Jones in the second yes. as well. Follows him through. Kenny's going to take a look at these two youngsters here, size them up, make some adjustments. So Schrader will drop back to third now, and Mason Mitchell starts to extend the lead in the 98 car. You know, Mason Mitchell has led a lot of laps, has a ton of second place finishes. He wants to win. Everybody wants to win, but he wants to win so bad. Ten runner up finishes. Yeah, it's an unbelievable stat. John West Townley in the 15. The Zaxby's toy in the meantime. He and Grant Enfinger fighting for position. Another look at the lead change a moment ago. Mitchell to the inside. I'm really surprised that he made the bottom work, but he just drove in there so hard and kept that run going where he could slide up in front of him. And Kenny knew what was coming as well and uh, kind of helped the situation. Mitchell on the front straightaway. Down into one. The lead now by about six car lengths over young Brandon Jones in the four. We put 25 with 200 laps on the board. One of the things, Andy, we didn't get to talk about that first lap wreck and caution in turn four. The tires haven't heated up yet, but now everything should be a temper. Well, it is, and it's going to keep getting hotter as we go. That's the thing. The guys put a lot of laps on their tires uh, in practice, but they do it five laps, six laps at a time, ten lap runs, and they say, well, we were on 80 lap tires, but now we're going to see 80 consecutive laps, and guys are really going to find out what they have. I board briefly there with Grant Enfinger in the 90. You see Enfinger and Kimmel. That's a fight for sixth position. Kimmel in the yellow Menards answer car back in seventh. Frank has struggled. An unbelievable stat. Ten championships, 80 wins, most in ARCA history. Wins here a year ago has led one lap so far this year. Yeah, that is, that is very surprising. But I will say that with Frank's experience, the effort, the determination of that Winchon team, uh, I think the you know I would have thought it would already happen, but it's going to happen soon where he gets back to the front. Up out of the back straightaway, and finger Kimmel, and right behind him, JJ Haley, who put on such a show for us at Elko a couple of weeks ago, qualified on the pole, ran in the top three or four just about all night long. Yes, a good third place finish for him up there, and and you know he ran with the good guys all day. You learn so much more when you're racing around Kenny Schrader, Frank Kimmel, Grant Enfinger. You just learn so much faster. Board with Austin Wayne Self in the 22 car, sitting fifth right now out of Austin, Texas. Not a great qualifying run, started back in 14th, but he has been marching toward the front. Was so impressive here a year ago, leading the Scott Rookie of the Year standings right now in the ARCA Racing Series. Well, he, he was one of the teams that did get to come and test uh, this past Monday. They had a great test and, and felt like they were a good car on the long runs, Rick. Kimmel still trying to track down Enfinger. This is the fight for 6th, 7th, and 8th. Kimmel in the yellow 44, the black 90 car Ben Finger, the BK entry as they move up on some slower ground. That's actually Austin Wayne Self there in the 22 running in fifth. You've got fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, pretty much under a blanket here. They're going to make a fight out of it already. Yeah, absolutely true. That 22 car, Austin Wayne Self for the Cunningham team out of Georgia. So impressive a year ago. Let's get back on board with Grant Enfinger, the championship leader. Four wins on the season and nine starts. He sits sixth right now in that night. Look at that, how the division, the, when you get the banking, a driver's vision goes away. Uh, as you follow the in cars down the straightaway, you see the whole racetrack, but when you get in the corner and the, and the car gets squatted down, there's very limited view, uh, which makes it even more difficult to miss the wrecks up in front of you. <laughs> it can be a problem. Good battle for the lead taking place out of turn four. Mason Mitchell from West Des Moines, Iowa, your leader in the 98 car, right behind him, Brandon Jones in that XI Chevrolet from the Turner Scott Stables. 
They've opened up a dozen or more car lengths on Kenny Schrader now, the pole sitter today in the Federated 52. We've got a lot of racing to go. We talked during that first caution, Andy, off air about pit strategy here today. You get six more tires to use over the course of this run. What about fuel? What about tire windows? Fuel, I, I think they can get by with pretty much a splash and go, just get a few gallons in the, in the car. So uh, whether or not they take it during both stops, but tires are key. You're going to see on this first stop, probably guys put on their right side tires unless one of them has a gut feel that this race might go green. And you might see one or two competitors go ahead and put on four the first time, thinking that the race would go green and try to catch the rest of the field uh, by surprise. Back a little further, this is end finger of the 90. Haley now in the 66 has gotten by Frank Gimmel, the young J.J. Haley at age 15. A couple of weeks ago, we were with you at Elko in Minnesota. He became the youngest Menards Ansel Pole Award winner in series history at age 15 and some change. Two weeks older and more experienced now. <laughs> wow. Uh, that, that would be amazing to be in, the, in, in that kid's <laughs> shoes right there. You know, we got to give a call out to, uh, to Justin Boston. He was in that first crash. We thought he went down a couple laps, but Kevin Reed, actually hit it at the right times, did everything. They didn't lose a lap, and he's already back up to ninth place. Wow. Uh, good little effort for that uh, 25 team. And on the lead lap as well for Justin Boston, who was an ace at short track racing in this series. Won at Toledo Speedway, a very fast half mile uh, in Ohio just uh, earlier this season. So battling up front, we've got uh, this battle off in Wayne Self, the 90 of Enfinger. Let's climb on board in Self's machine running in fifth. But he's got Enfinger to his inside. Grant Enfinger wants to take fifth away as they fight down into turn one. Well, Grant's a little bit faster, but Austin has the preferred line. Self on the high side, Enfinger on the bottom, and Enfinger will pick up the position at least momentarily. We'll see what Self can do on the high side. Back on board with the 22 car. There's the 90 of Enfinger. Try to do that slide job, Andy, that crossover that blocks the car on the high side. Yeah, and you really got to drive it down in there, and you hope the guy that you're giving the slide job to recognizes what is coming uh, <laughs> so you don't have a little bit of incidental contact. Haley in the white 66 on the bottom. That's the broad ability Toyota out of the Venturini Stables. Then you've got Kimmel right behind him and the Menard, Menard's Ansel 44, the defending series champion, still hunting his first win of the year. Frank Kimmel back in eighth position right now. And here's Justin Boston. Yeah, working his Luke way car. back into the, into the picture here. Tight action back here, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, end finger. In fifth position now in the 90, the points leader. That's the K-Site Motor Honey Ford today from BK Construction. And, uh, the Howard Bixman team, he has cleared that group and is trying to drive to the front. Here's Kimmel now working his way to the inside of South. Wow, great two wide race in here. This racetrack is so much fun. So much fun to drive, so much fun to watch. Seventh, eighth, and ninth in play. We take you back up a little further. Self in seventh in the 22. As we watch this battle, Self there, Kimmel in the 44. Right behind him, Justin Boston in the Zalute 25. Andy, you pointed it out. Great job by that crew. Even though he was damaged in that lap one wreck, didn't go a lap down. Yeah, that, you know, Kevin Reed, I, I believe, has probably been the most successful crew chief over the past two years of, in the ARCA series. And moments like this, when you get in trouble and you can still come out of it, shows his experience level right there. Closing in on lap 50, running times in the running order, top of your screen. As we keep you posted on the action here at Winchester Speedway. Mason Mitchell out in front. He's got a four tenths of a second lead. There is more to come. Welcome back live to Winchester Speedway, Winchester, Indiana. The Hers Chase the Taste 200 presented by Calypso Lemonade. The Arca Racing Series presented by Menards live on the CBS Sports Network. Alongside Andy Hillenberg, I'm Rick Benjamin. We've had a lead change while we were away. Andy, this had been brewing for a couple of laps. Brandon Jones and Mason Mitchell. Well, he'd been stalking him for about 10 laps here. Makes the move down on the inside. It turns one and two and clears him. And with 60 laps on the board, Brandon Jones in his first career Arca start takes over the lead. Andy Hillenberg, I'm Rick Benjamin, and joining us is the driver of the 23 car, Spencer Gallagher from GMS Racing. Good to see you here, but what's the story? You're not out on the racetrack where you ought to be today. Hey, thanks for having me on first off, but uh, you know my GMS Racing guys and I sat down these uh, last couple weeks, and we talked about what's going to be best for me for the rest of the season. We decided to follow the model I always liked, the Chase Elliott said in 2013. 
which is to do as many different races as I possibly can all over the uh, the southeast where we're going to be racing all kinds of different stuff, late model trucks. So, you know, that freed up a day here. So I figured, hey, may as well come visit the guys and watch this great ARCA Racing Series race at Winchester. What is so tough about Winchester? You've raced it. You know, the biggest thing you come to find that's tough about Winchester is this, this is a track that sets a blistering pace throughout the race, but it also goes green. So you have to have that great, outstanding, long green flag run car that you're going to be racing with side by side with the 20 other ARCA Racing Series guys that you know are going to be in there in the 100 every race. We were talking before we came on the air with Spencer Gallagher uh, about cars that looked good to you, Spencer, as a driver during practice and qualifying. Who do you like here today? Oh, right now, I mean, uh, the obvious two choices are sitting currently up front. The uh, the four and the 98, I've just been impressed with all day long, setting a blistering pace. But beyond that, you know, I, I got to give a shout out to a couple cars in the field. I've watched the uh, the 90 car of Grant Anfinger going around, and I really like the attitude that I see that car coming off the corner with. The, the way these high banks of Winchester work, you almost want the car sideways just a little bit to, to get the maximum speed you can off the corner. So I think he's just about one pit stop away from being a real contender in this race. All right, and veteran drivers and veteran guys on the racetrack, tell me about Kenny Schrader here today. Kenny has been just absolutely what you'd expect Kenny Schrader to be at, at a track that he knows like the back of his hand. I think he's biding his time right now. He knows these young bucks are going to run up front, burn their tires off, and he's going to be right there waiting for them when they back up to him. All right, stick around with us for a few minutes now. Spencer Gallagher joining us here topside as we watch the four car continue to lead. That's young Brandon Jones working lap traffic. He's got Mason Mitchell behind him. They lap by the three car of Carl Weber over in turn two. Weber, a young driver, just age 17, running 13th right now as he goes two laps down. Brandon Jones stretching the lead. Andy, you've been doing this for a long time as a driver and a team owner at a lot of levels. You won a championship here. Brandon Jones running a Turner Scott Motorsports car. If you're not familiar with the team, we're on board here with Grant Edfinger who runs in fourth spot. That is top level technology that they have access to, isn't it? It is, and they, they also get to do a little bit of testing. They, they've got the best pit stops. They've got a, a, a good organization deep, as you would say. I mean, uh, the talent level all the way down from the, the tire changers, engineering, and it's showing up here on the racetrack, but uh, uh, you know, Brandon Jones is, is definitely doing his part here on the field, too. There's Enfinger in the BK construction car over on the back side of the racetrack. Car number 90 running in third position now, making fourth spot for Enfinger, about six seconds behind, about three and a half behind Schrader as we take a look at that lead battle. Jones by about three car lengths right now. Jones right behind him, Mason Mitchell, and uh, Spencer Gallagher, Brandon Jones up front, young driver, not a lot different from you in terms of experience level. Running some NASCAR K&N series events, a couple of truck starts. You've run the truck series as well. That's kind of what you want to do in these next couple of months, isn't it? Yeah, no, that's that's uh, definitely what me, me and my GMS racing guys are going to be looking into in these next couple of months is expanding my uh, my schedule in NASCAR Kevin World Truck Series as we're watching Mason Mitchell trying to work Brandon Jones back over for the lead here. Good battle up in turn two. Mitchell says, hey, I'm not done contending for the lead here. Well, and both of them, Rick, are starting to slide around a little bit. And you watch Kenny Schrader. He's starting to creep back up in the picture. His car's smooth and straight. Here they are, side, side by side. Side by side, down into one for the lead on the bottom. Mason Mitchell out of Des Moines, Iowa, up top. Young Brandon Jones out of the Georgia area. They are still side by side on the backstretch, working lap 75. Mitchell trying that dive bomb move once again that worked for him earlier. Doesn't get the job done this time. No, because I don't think Brandon's going to uh, to check up and give him that hole, uh, you know, especially really at any point in the race. This is two youngsters going at it, and they both want to be top dog. Now, Brandon Jones would not be the first ever first-time winner in ARCA in his first career start if he gets the job done today. We had Austin Terrio uh, earlier this year at Michigan. Yeah, that was, uh, I, I got to tell you, watching from the third-place car, that was an amazing performance to watch him in the 98 and Mason Mitchell going out. Those two were, uh, they were playing a different ball game that day. But, yeah, it, it would not be the first time we've, uh, we've seen history like that, first-time winners in the ARCA Racing Series. Jones by a couple of car lengths down in turn one over Mason Mitchell, working lap number 78 of 200 today on the CBS. Sports Network. We're glad to have you with us live. Get on board with that second place car of Mason Mitchell. Andy, how much can you tell about how a car is working by the driver's hands there? Well, surprisingly, I mean, for as much as, as Mason's car looks like it's sliding around, I mean, he's pretty smooth there on the steering wheel here, getting under Brandon here, going down the back straightaway and trying to make a race out of it again. Mason Mitchell trying to take back the lead in the 98 car, gets the job done. We'll see if Brandon Jones lets him go. We're not even to halfway yet. Got a lot of time to go here. 
here. And Spencer Gallagher, if you were up in this lead battle right now, what would you be thinking about in terms of tires with two stops coming up? You know, the first thing that would be entering in my head is that, you know what, we're, we're coming up on a, uh, a possible green flag run. Who knows how much longer these tires are going to hold out. As hard as these guys are battling, you almost got to think this this has got to be destroying your left side. You're going to change right side tires this first time. But we still got 120 laps to go here. And as hard as these two young bucks are battling, I mean, Kenny Schrader's just got to be licking his chops. You're watch I'm watching him right now just inching to him, inching to him. It's, he, he, these two are making Kenny Schrader a very happy man right now. You saw the two leaders lap by the 22 of Austin Wayne Self, who was so strong here a year ago. That car's been off the pace the last several laps. He is now two laps down. There is Schrader just making laps in third spot. He has cut the deficit down here from the lead uh, in half in the last five laps, Rick. The zero of James Swanson heading to pit road. We've had a couple of cars go behind the wall. Of course, the 17 of Kyle Weatherman, the Rulo Brothers Ford. We were expecting that car to be a contender. The 77 of Anderson Bowen. That one of the Cunningham Dodges both behind the wall after that early wreck here today. Leaders on the front straightaway. The 98 of Mitchell out in front. He's got about five car lengths now over the four of Brandon Jones. And then the pole sitter Schrader in the Federated Chevrolet of 52. All three have led laps here today. They've been our only leaders thus far. Uh, Kenny just keeps reeling them in mm -hmm. smooth and straight. And at this point in the race, it's not that important to be up front, is it, to be the leader of the race? Well, I you, you want to definitely see the lead and, and not knowing how the pit stop strategy here is going to work out. I mean, there's a lot of guys that are hoping for a caution as Kenny's trying to get under Brandon right now coming off turn four. Uh, you know, not knowing how the race is going to work out. If green flag stops do come into play, then yes, you do want to be the leader so you can dictate what happens. Trader on the bottom. Now, he chose the outside lane, Spencer Gallagher, the initial start and then the first restart. Assuming, I guess, on cold tires, the high side would be better, but he made an inside move there. You know, it's crazy how much more grip you can pick up once you get some proper heat in these tires, but obviously the outside lane is definitely the preferred line around here, especially on the cold tires. You can just throw that car up in there so much deeper than you think is possible, and that bank is going to make it stick for you. But once these things get hot and gummy with just the right angle in the middle of the corner, you can definitely send it to the bottom, hammer that gas, and she'll stick for you, at least for a little while. Leader still up front. There's the... 98 of race leader Mason Mitchell, Ken Schrader in the Federated Auto Parts Chevrolet, great NASCAR veteran, former open wheel champion, a lot of ARCA wins to his credit. Running this series eh, pretty much full time now. He's got some drivers who run this car occasionally, but Schrader is hungry to get to victory lane yet again. Oh, always. And, and I mean, the thing about Kenny right now is he's just rolling the center of the corner right there. You see the center of the corner. He pulls up on him uh, a lot easier on tires, a lot easier on brakes. Now he's making the move for the lead, getting into turn one. So Schrader to the bottom takes the point back. We'll see what Mitchell can do with him here. The 72 of Tom Hester on pit road for his first stop of the day. So we're starting to see some teams thinking, hey, this may go green for a while. I may need to stop now for two tires. Absolutely. It's, you know, this this right here is what you call a crew chief's nightmare because we're just close enough to that gap in the in the middle of the race where you start thinking about taking four tires versus two because if this thing keeps going on, the long green flag runs, four tires is the smart bet to go. There's nothing that a crew chief fears more than taking two tires on the first stop and sitting there the whole rest of the race looking at a set of perfect good four tires. Yeah, it would not be to your benefit to try to do that. There's no question about it. Schrader, your leader, by about six car lengths on the backstretch, closing in on halfway here at Winchester Speedway, Winchester, Indiana. Live on the CBS Sports Network, coverage of the ARCA Racing Series presented by Menards. And a problem, apparently, very long pit stop for Tom Hester. They've jacked up the right side of that car. This is not a simple tire change, Andy Hillenberg. You know, it looks like they could be going to work on a number of things, possibly even brakes. They're, they look like they can fix it. Uh, crews are, are trying to get directions to them. Hopefully Tommy can get back out in this race. Hesser just a lap down running in the top 11. He was a top five car here a year ago. And uh, Spencer Gallagher, this is a tough place on brakes, isn't it? Oh, it absolutely is. This, this is a track that's so fast. When you do get in the corner, you're slamming on the brakes to set that nose and get the thing initially turned. So we come to these tracks like Winchester and Salem with the, some of the biggest brake packages we put on these cars all year. Riding with Grant and Finger running fourth championship leader in that K-Side Motor Honey Ford. And on board with the 22 now, Austin Wayne the self on pit road. Yeah, three, all three Cunningham cars. Talk to Kerry Shearer, the team principal, before we got going here today. This is a bad day at Black Rock for this race team. Uh, it sure is looking that way right now. Uh, Dick Berger on pit road. Well, a couple of the guys that thought they were going to have a big day, Hessert and Self, both pitting early. It's a good idea to do that. If the car isn't running right, you've still got almost half the race. Get it right on pit road. 
See what you can make out of it. Hesser still on pit road. He has lost so many laps here as they work on the right rear corner. He has no chance of a good finish today. Austin Way himself still shown in 12th, but shown five laps down with that lengthy pit stop as he pulls out in front of the race leader, Schrader in the 52 car. The Schrader's on top, running order top of your screen. Enfinger is second, nearly two seconds back. There was contact a moment ago. Take a look at this out of turn I, four. I don't think Austin Self realized that Kenny was coming Whoa. right there. Good thing the Schrader's got so much experience to rub <laughs> fenders like that, right? A absolutely. If there's one thing that Kenny Schrader could have done wrong there and, and try to jump away from Austin Wayne's elf, he'd have jumped right in the wall. So that's that's the KG veteran knowing the best thing you can do right here is nothing. Let the rookie find find your, find you in his mirror and uh, get out of the way himself. And right there, you're taking a look at what new tires do for you. With those new tires for Austin Self, drives right back around Kenny. Makes you jack the bear for 25 laps, huh? <laughs> yes, it does, especially <laughs> when nobody else has got them. <laughs> Closing in on halfway here at Winchester Speedway, Ken Schrader is back out in front. He was our pole award winner, our Ansel pole award winner earlier. He's led 32 laps through five lead changes thus far. We had one caution, not even one lap on the board when we had a tangle up in turn four, taking out a couple of really good race cars, the 77 and the 17. But Schrader is in control over Enfinger, Jones, Mitchell, and Boston. More to come at Winchester. Back live at Winchester Speedway, Winchester, Indiana. Ken Schrader, the race leader on pit road, Dick Bergeron. Schrader originally was going to take just outside tires on his first pit stop because they have run so long. He's going to put four on at this point. The guys that put on just two are going to beat him out, but I don't think very many people are going to do that. Four tires seems to be a good strategy this deep in the race. They still have two. They're only allowed to have six fresh tires to start the race. Schrader and Mason Mitchell side by side. Who gets off pit road first, Andy Hillenberg? It looks like Mason Mitchell just barely squeaked by Kenny Schrader for the lead there. Question is, did they violate the 23 mile an hour pit road speed limit? We'll find out when we continue. Under caution at Winchester for a Josh Williams wreck. We'll be back. Getting set for a restart at Winchester Speedway. The reason for the caution, Josh Williams in the six, hammering the outside wall in turn four. Dr. Dick Berger. Josh, what happened? I'm not sure, to be honest with you. I, don't, I think uh, looking at the right front tire, it looks like we had something rubbing on the bead, and it just blew out. It was instant, but um, it kind of felt like something broke, but it is what it is, and uh, we just had a bad weekend all weekend, but it is what it is. We'll come back to the next one. And the green flag is out. Right? Josh Williams so strong at Elko and that Southwest Cable Construction Ford started 16th behind the wall. Off the green, the lead taken back by Mason Mitchell in that black 98 car. I told you, Rick, he does not want to run second. Those 10 second place finishes, he does not want to even ride in second. That's the Musselman's TTS Ford. Spencer Gallagher, you talked to me in the break about Schrader wanting the outside on the restart. Mason Mitchell says, hey, new tires, I'm out of here. You know, Mason Mitchell is making me look like a real dummy right now because <laughs> I spent this entire break saying that the bottom lane does not appear to go on restarts, but by God, he jumped down in front there, and he has opened himself up a good 10-car gap on Kenny Schrader almost instantaneously. That was an amazing restart. I got to give it to Mason. So Mitchell now in the lead, Schrader second. How about Justin Boston right behind in third? That car's carrying a lot of bear bond, Andy Hillenberg. He was damaged in that first lap incident. They kept him on the lead lap, and there you've got the Winchester Dominator, Kimmel in the Menards 44 in fourth spot. Well, what a comeback for that Venturini Motorsports team in the 25 car. Grant Infinger, our point leader, as you say, has got uh, Kimmel sandwiched there with Justin. On the move, meantime, is Enfinger, as Andy referenced, in the 90, taking a look. We're on board with Grant out of Fairhope, Alabama, trying to swing inside Kimmel's car on the backside. Look at how much those cars are wiggling up off the corner, and those are new tires. Battling for fourth spot side by side, Kimmel able to hold on to the position. Enfinger, one of the few guys able to make his car work at the bottom of the racetrack. Yeah, and Frank kind of squeezed him down there, kind of ran the middle of the racetrack to, to make, make Grant try a little bit harder. Still, veteran moves. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Still that battle. Less than 85 laps to go here at Winchester Speedway. Still in play. This is the fight for fourth. Kimmel in the 44 on the outside has the spot. The points leader and finger in the 90. We heard from both of these drivers at the top of the broadcast. Side by side on a turn four. And it's still Kimmel hanging on to fourth. Your leader remains Mitchell. Schrader is second. Boston is third. Schrader not yet a winner this season. Mitchell never a winner in ARCA. The leader. 
Boston got his first career win at Toledo Speedway, a half mile high bank oval similar to Winchester earlier this year. And Kimmel still hunting his first win of 2014. Amazingly, as we're at the halfway point of this Arca Racing Series season, right behind him in the 90 car is Enfin. Well, Brandon Jones also working yeah. his way back into the picture. You know, Mason Mitchell's really went to the whip here and opened up a really big lead. You've got to be concerned if he's wearing out those tires, you know, very early in the run because we've still got 80 laps to go. Yeah, is there a problem, Spencer Gallagher, occasionally if you, you think the car's better than it than maybe really is and you get on it a little too hard too soon? Uh, you know, i got to tell you, there is definitely such a thing as Superman syndrome. I've experienced it myself, and uh, it's i got to say, as far out as Mason's jumped, I'm getting uh, – eerie recollections of the beginning of this race where Kenny was all of a sudden 20 car lengths back and 80 laps later found himself right back again at the back bumper of Mason Mitchell. So interesting to see how this plays out. This is the battle of the 90, the 44, the 4, 4th, 5th, and 6th right here. And now Enfinger gets around Kimmel for fourth spot. It starts to open up a gap. He was being held up a little, I guess, by the 44, Andy. Yeah, and I think Grant needs to stay close to Kenny. In the last run here, right before that caution, they were the best long-run cars. And if we get another long run, depending on the team's adjustments there, I think the 52 and 90, it, it, whoever can get out in front here and, and protect that right front tire is going to be your favorite at the end. Watching Schrader in second. There's Boston in third. Good distance back to the leader. As we take a look at Enfinger and Frank Kimmel, we saw him a moment ago. Dr. Dick Berger and Frank Kimmel, it's a head scratcher. He's with a good race team in Wintron. That is a team with plenty of funding and tremendous talent behind the wheel. What did Frank say to you about their struggles so far this year? One of the interesting stories here is that in practice, Enfinger just wasn't fast. He was having a real tough time getting into the corners. Who did he go and ask for advice? Frank Kimmel. And then they ran side by side, then finger past Kimmel. <laughs> and sometimes the teacher and the student, that's a tough relationship. Andy, you've been a teacher to a lot of people. Spencer Gallagher, you've been a student. You're a student of this sport right now. Sometimes the mentoring can uh, take a turn you don't expect, right? Well, you, the, the student always wants to outperform the teacher, for sure. <laughs> that, uh, that comes without saying. 75 to go here at Winchester Speedway, Winchester, Indiana, on the CBS Sports Network. The Arca Racing Series presented by Menards. i Benjamin, Andy Hillenberg alongside. Spencer Gallagher joining us topside, the driver of the number 23 Allegiant Airlines Chevrolet from GMS Motorsports, and our good friend Dr. Nick Bergren on pit road. Mitchell, your leader. We'll be back. We told you earlier in the broadcast about the 100 years of racing history at what used to be called Funks Speedway, 1947. Now Winchester Speedway, Andy Hillenberg, the big cars. You drove sprint cars and midgets here. Look at this, Spencer Gallagher. How would you like to drive one of these cars with no roll bars, just a lap belt? Even Jeff Gordon raced here in open wheel cars back in the day. You know, I, I got to hand it to these pictures I've been seeing. It's a special breed of insanity that would be going around <laughs> there in those old cars. Back then, a roll bar was more of a suggestion than anything, wasn't it? Andy Hillenberg, you didn't race in the leather helmet days here, but you've been on this, uh, this high bank racetrack uh, in all kinds of equipment as we take a look back at the lead change that happened while we were talking history here. Ken Schrader very patiently working his way by Mason Mitchell. I like the looks of that 52 car and the 90 sneaking up there behind him. I think it's going to come down to the 52 and the 90 here in about 30 laps. But uh, right now those youngsters are, are holding tough. Schrader back on top, set a track record and qualifying. Let's get on board here with Grant Enfinger, championship leader, four wins, nine starts this season, three for four on the short track, sitting in fourth. He's battled back after not qualifying particularly well, started back in seventh today. It's been a slow move to the front. He's closed it. I, I tell you, I can't be more impressed with anybody than Justin Boston here today with the damage that car's carrying on the left rear. Yeah, got wounded there on the first lap. You know, stayed patient there on that first run. Got themselves in a position with a great pit stop to be up in the front pack. On board again with Enfinger in the k -Side Motor Honey Car, the 90 for Howard Bixman's team up in front of him. We saw the 25, this Luke Toyota, one of the Venturini cars for Boston, the Toledo winner up front at Schrader and Mason Mitchell gathering himself again to charge and put a battle on for the lead. He is going to keep on coming. I, I, I've not seen this where, I mean, second place. He just, I think he'd rather be, uh, be in third if he can't be in the lead. Schrader out in front, the 98 of Mitchell in second spot onto the front straightaway here at Winchester. Looks like a long green flag run. Spencer Gallagher, I think what you commented on earlier, we had that one caution for the Josh Williams wreck. Grab those four tires. We may be green to the end here. Yeah, it's, uh, I, was, I was talking about it during the break. 
This is a race that historically has gone green since Arca's been coming here in 2011. The, uh, the race has only averaged 35 laps of caution per race. So we could be seeing these cars in the state that they're going to be running into the end of the race, which is going to set us up, I think, for a very exciting battle to the finish. So Schrader with the lead by a couple of car lengths. Here comes Mason Mitchell, relentless. Thomas Prater's DK Lock Chevrolet on the bottom gives up another lap to the leaders. Andy Hillenberg, is this a case of Mason Mitchell saying, hey, I need to cool my tires a little and make another run at it? I don't think so. I think he's just tro trying so hard to lead every single lap that he possibly can uh, and get that first win out, uh, you know, under his belt. Uh, I think once he wins that first one, you know, he could reel off two or three of them right in a row real easy. And, Spencer, it's not a case a lot of times for a young driver not being fast necessarily. It's racecraft. It's understanding the strategy when you need it. Oh, yeah, I was just chuckling to myself as Andy was talking. I, I don't think Mason has a slow setting right now. I think he's got on and insanity speed. But it's <laughs> definitely something he's going to have to learn as time goes on. He can stretch those 20 car length leads out in the first, uh, you know, 50 or 60 laps. But what's going to happen right now is going to happen to him. Is the old veteran is going to stay there, save his tires, and walk right back up to him. So this is going to be, if nothing else, a learning experience for old Mason Mitchell. Top two, Schrader in the white 52. Right behind him in the black 98 is Mitchell. This Fight for third, a good one, Andy Hillenberg. Here comes Enfinger to the bottom of Justin Boston over at turn three. Grant Enfinger has been able to roll the bottom of the racetrack. Everybody's pretty much been in the same groove except for Grant. He's found a second groove that can work. So as he gets up to these, these faster cars up here, it's pretty surprising how he can stick on the bottom like that and still maintain the speed. On board again with Enfinger. You can see the lap traffic to the inside. That's the 68 of Will Kimmel. Frank Kimmel's nephew, Bill's son, Will Kimmel, a third-generation racer, very good. A team that uh, needs more backing to be able to run more competitively at some of these events. Running two cars here today. As we watch the 55 of young Cody Coughlin down in turn two. He's fighting hard to stay on the lead lap, Rick. And, uh, you know, Kenny's coming, but uh, Cody, he's still swinging. Cody Coughlin, a good young late model racer, making the move up to the full-size Arca cars, 3,400 pounds, 800 horsepower, wicked fast even at a place here like Winchester Speedway and like Madison International Speedway in Wisconsin, where we'll go live on CBS Sports Sunday afternoon, August the 24th. Hope you can join us for a start that will be 1 o'clock Eastern time, 2 o'clock Central time on this channel. Trader in the 52, your points no, not a points contender this year. Your pole starter here today. Fast qualifier with a new track record. Took the track record away. Talk about young guns. Ryan Blaney said it three years ago. Dave Sun. We know Ryan from the NASCAR Truck Series and the Nationwide Series. Young guy on the move at Penske Motorsports. Trader says, hey, I'm faster than that guy at 59. Comes in here and sets a track record. <laughs> he just keeps on coming. Just keeps on coming. There's your battle for third and fourth. Grant Enfinger of the 90. Take a look back at what happened to Justin Boston. This is lap number one just after we went green. Right there, boom, got hit. No left fault of his. Damage. No, no, he was trying to, to, to not collect the 15 car and uh, got tore up. Coming up on 40 laps to go today here at Winchester Speedway. This one has been run lightning quick. Only two cautions so, so far. Let's get on board with the Motor Honey K side car. That's the 90 of Grant Enfinger. And Finger sitting in fourth spot, still trying to work his way by Justin Boston's machine. Got up alongside Justin a couple of times. And let's get on board here with Cody Coughlin. This is the Jags Toyota out of the Venturini stable. Cody running in ninth spot, just going to lap down to Kenny in this group. The top four, you can pretty much put a blanket on them. Uh, and any of them, depending on their what they're thinking, could be, you know, the guy that says go first. Uh, what I mean by that is who's saving their stuff. Well, you know, Spencer and I both ruled out Mason. He's not saving anything, but uh, is Grant have a little bit? Is Justin have a little bit? You know, you mentioned his win at Toledo this year. Uh, he has won before, so, you know, maybe there's a little bit more patience on his side. 40 to go at Winchester Speedway in Winchester, Indiana. Back on board with Ed Finger, still fourth championship leader. We've had eight lead changes now, but only three drivers have spent time on the point. Schrader and Mitchell up front, and we had the four car of young Brandon Jones, who's back in fifth. He hasn't started to really rumble yet here. In fact, he's given up a fair chunk of track position as we watch the points leader, Enfinger, come out of the front straightaway. We'll have 162 on the board. Behind him next is the four car of Brandon Jones, crew chief by Shane Huffman. They know that name, uh, ace in the USAR Pro Cup ranks for a long time and runs some nationwide series events. Thanks for Junior Motorsports in NASCAR for a couple of years. Shane Huffman working as a crew chief now at Turner Scott and 
taking care of things for Brandon Jones. And Shane told me before the start, he said, man, this kid's got a lot of talent. Keep your eye on him. Well, and I'm sure they're one of the teams that are that are hoping to get another caution, to get another crack at an adjustment, throw those right side tires on, and uh, get another swing at this thing. Trader on top in the 52 car. That's the white Federated Auto Parts Chevrolet. Races out of Concord, North Carolina now, originally from Fenton, Missouri. At age 59, still as young as they come and gasses it up just as well as anybody. Yeah, he didn't look like a 59-year-old <laughs> in that Federated Auto Parts car. Not a bit. Schrader still out on top. Mason Mitchell from West Des Moines, Iowa in second. Justin Boston out of Maryland running third. It was Luke 25, and there is Brandon Jones in the Exide 4 car. Back in fifth position. Fourth belongs to Grant Enfinger, the championship leader. Jones looked good early. Started on the inside of row number one. Qualified second quick. Led some laps early on. Has uh, dropped back a little bit, but still not out of contention, certainly. But coming up on 30 to go, Spencer, uh, you've got to go. If you've got something left, now's the time to start showing your cards, I would think. Uh, absolutely. I think uh, it's not going to be 10 more laps here before these guys are going to be tapped the last of what's in the tanks of these cars. And uh, it's going to be pretty tough, I think. It's pretty tall order to catch Kenny Schreer as we see him put Mr. Uh, John West Townley a lap down here. Uh, but it, I'm looking forward to see what they got as we see Boston working over the 98 of Mason Wow. Mitchell. Mason Mitchell, who was so strong off that last restart, dropping back further. He's more than a second behind Schrader. And Justin Boston right there fighting for second spot. Well, you said go, and Justin heard you, Rick. <laughs> Justin Boston trying to win his second Arca Racing Series event of the season, sitting there in third position, not out of this thing by any means, coming up on 30 laps to go at Winchester Speedway. Going to make the run down here on the inside. See if he can get enough speed to slide up. He's not going to be able to do it. Mason's going to hold that hold that line up on the high side and make it hard on him. Right you know, I tell you, Mason has just got to have some bulldog in his lineage somewhere because that kid will just <laughs> not let go. Coming up by John West Townley, Zaxby's Toyota, the 15, a regular in the Camping World Truck Series of NASCAR, as well as running a full ARCA schedule this year. They just haven't really been on the pace today. Eighth spot, a lap down. First car, one lap down. We've got seven left on the lead lap as Boston moves by and takes over the position. Mason's not done. we got lap. Whoa! Justin oh, Boston wow. nearly got in big trouble oh, going down oh, boy. in three oh. there. Has to get Mason out of the gas. Back around. They wow. split the lap car of Tommy Prater in the two car, the DK Lock Chevrolet. And that gave Mason Mitchell an opportunity. He cashes in. Let's take another look at what happened here on the back stretch as they came off two lap traffic, a huge lap fact. cars everywhere and only at Ooh. Winchester Speedway. Wow, down on the flat, wiggles up. Here's an onboard look for you, onboard the 90 of Enfing. Now Grant's getting an eyeful right here. Like, uh oh, you can see him almost Whoa. start clinching up. And I'm sure to Justin Boston, as we take another look at it here, he thought, well, that's the only move I can make. Well, and they're not done now as Grant's trying to get under under Justin here as they're getting around the lap car of John West. That gave Mason Mitchell the opportunity to move back to second spot with 25 laps to go today at Winchester Speedway. Well, Shreve. Wow. Yeah, Schrader put a straightaway on him in that, in that uh, instance right there. But what it did was give a second, third, fourth, and fifth are now all right together. As we keep an eye on that battle for you, 25 to go today. And the Hurst Chase the Taste 200 presented by Calypso Lemonade live at Winchester Speedway in Indiana on the CBS Sports Network. Justin Boston now closing back in on Mason Mitchell. This is the fight for second spot. Schrader probably didn't have time to look at his rearview mirror, Spencer Gallagher. This place is so fast. But I'm sure you heard on the radio, good stuff. Open that lead up. Yeah, hey, you know, it's uh, Kenny, Kenny's smile's got to be a mile wide here. This has been nothing but good news to him. But you know what? I got to give a shout out for just to Justin Boston for making that thing stick. I thought <laughs> for sure we were going to have to have about a 20 lap caution right then and there. <laughs> Justin Boston, I'm sure when he came off the second corner, didn't realize how quickly he'd get to the two car, a lap car. Absolutely. You can see it in the replay of Grant Enfinger. He, he thinks the two's going to kind of maintain his line and he's going to try and split him, go three wide. Maybe get a little sucker punch on the 98. Oh, where'd he come from? But the two just keeps coming down and down and squeezing him. And uh, as they would say over in England, we about had ourselves a moment there. Yeah, definitely a moment, no doubt. Schrader out in front. Boston and back Mitchell fighting inside. for second. Justin Boston gets it gathered back up and takes second spot back. Oh, and he just squeaks up there in front of him. Now we're going to see what Justin's got. It's a little bit late. We're coming to 20 to go here. Schrader having a straightaway. But if Justin can start pulling away, we get that late caution, he might have something. 
Got on board there for a moment with Mason Mitchell in the Muscles, Musclemen's Wildlife Foundation of Florida TTS Ford entry. The Zaluk Toyota of Boston up in second spot now. All of this benefiting the great veteran Ken Schrader, who's now taken advantage to stretch the lead to 3.6 seconds with 20 to go. Well, Kenny's starting to work some laugh traffic, but he can do it at his own pace, having a lead like that. Pick his holes, take his time, work his way through there. Schrader on top, heading down into turn number three, working left 182, Boston in second, Mitchell in third. Good battle here. This is fourth. Uh, the four car, rather, in fifth position right now. The 72 of Tom Hessert, not on the lead lap in 13th. They've been running together for several laps. Hessert uh, marked a couple of laps down in that machine, but he is 13th on the board right now. There's Hessert in the CareGuard 72. There's the four, the Exide Chevrolet of Brandon Jones in fifth. Jones led laps earlier, one of our three leaders so far this afternoon here at Winchester. Take a look there at the 98, Mason Mitchell settling back in the third in front of Grant Enfinger, the points leader in the K-Site Motor Honey car. I think everybody, oh, we, we got a car up in turn three. Caution is out, Rick. This is the, what I was getting ready wow. to say. Everybody in the field except Kenny Schrader wants to see a caution right now, and now we got it. Carl Weber in the three, the Sylvius Insurance Group entry out of Indiana, got the wall up in turn three and four. Could be a right front tire issue. That tire is down. Don't know if it went down first or after he got into the wall. Looks very similar, though, to what happened to Josh Williams earlier. So the caution waves with 16 laps remaining here at Winchester Speedway. Tough break for Carl. He was running in 10th spot in the top 10 for the youngster. Five laps down, not on the lead lap, but it's easy to go a lap down here at Winchester, and uh, sometimes there's nothing you can do about it to soldier on and, and be in the top 10. Certainly a good day for the 17-year-old out of Indiana. We're under caution for the third time today. We'll see what happens when pit road opens up here. Now, if you're one of the top three or four cars, do you gamble? Do you take two? There's seven cars on the lead lap, and with 15 laps to go, I think you've got to take your right side tires. You, you just got to do it. I, I, I absolutely agree with Andy. The only real move here for these guys in the top group is to take right side tires, and I'm here to tell you right now, this is going to be a battle for the ages. All right. I think we're going to see a very quick car out of the 98, and maybe even the 90 is going to surprise us here late in the race. Dr. Dick Berger on pit road watching leader Ken Schrader come his way. Looks like two tires is the call, Dick. Yeah, this is the backward strategy. They were going to start out with two tires on the first pit stop, four on the second one. Schrader pits out of the lead for two tires. This is his own crew. There are many hired crews who are here today, but these these guys are accustomed to working with Ken Schrader. Fuel going in the back as well. Trouble on the right rear. A long, long time on that right rear tire. And Schrader's going to lose the lead. Schrader gets down and away, but Mason Mitchell and Justin Boston are out first, and Brandon Jones too. So Kenny Schrader coughs up the lead on pit road with less than 15 to go. He's going to have to restart fourth, boys. Oh, my. This just changed everything. Wow. Rick. That's what happens on pit road. Schrader taking a little longer than he needed to on pit road. Boston and Mitchell get out first. We'll set the restart lineup when we come back. Coming up next on the CBS Sports Network at 4 Eastern time, the world's best beach volleyball players hit the sand. They'll miss the men's and women's finals. It's the AVP Milwaukee Open only on the 24-hour home of CBS Sports, the CBS Sports Network. Welcome back live to Winchester Speedway in Winchester, Indiana. I'm Rick Benjamin, Andy Hillenberg alongside. Spencer Gallagher joining us topside from GMS Racing, the Allegiant Airlines Chevrolet. Not in action today, sixth in points coming in. Spencer gathering information and gathering experience as he makes his climb up the motorsports ladder. We appreciate him stopping by with us today. Dr. Nick Berger with our coverage on Pit Road. All right, green flag next time by, boys. We'll have less than 10 to go. Double file restart. We have that late caution with Carl Weber in the wall. Two tires for their leaders. And up front, you've got Brandon Jones in the four. You've got the 98 of Mitchell on the outside of row one. I'm going to have to go checkers or wreckers here for Mason Mitchell. I, I really, I, I got to think that. Kenny Schrader, uh, you know, he dominated. If go, yeah, if you're going to lose the lead, I think fourth is the right spot because it puts him up in the high line here. And if Mason can make that first corner and make it stick, uh, Kenny might be able to, to follow him on through and get the second and be able to work him over with nine laps to go. On board here with Mason Mitchell, the restart. Uh, outside pole sitter alongside Brandon Jones. Kenny Schrader gave up the lead. A little slow bit on pit road with two tires. Schrader will line up in fourth spot. Safety car is in. We'll see what happens. Nine laps to go when they hit the green flag at start finish. And we are back on the way. That's his mother. That's his mother. And Frank wow. Kimmel. 
Frank Kimmel gets turned into the outside wall. Caution at the inside wall as Kimmel ends up in the concrete and the yellow comes right back out. The Ansel Menards Toyota of Frank Kimmel, the 10 time series champion, dumped coming to the green flag. The pushing and shoving started. We saw Brandon Jones there uh, didn't take off as good as Mason Mitchell and that backed the field up. That's Kimmel tough. restarting originally back at about seventh or eighth spot. Got some help. And John there. West Townley got in the back of Frank there. As they, uh, you know, as I mentioned there, Brandon Jones didn't come up through the gears as quick as Mason. And all that takes, Spencer Gallagher, is if somebody misses a shift, it'll stack them up big at a place like this. Absolutely. On a, on a restart like this where you could very well be the last of the day, you're not thinking or hoping that that guy in front of you is going to check up. And when he does, you're already so close. I mean, the, the hoods of these cars will get under the rears and just scoop those rear tires clean off the ground, and it's all over from there. Now, in the ARCA Racing Series presented by Menards, you don't finish under caution, do you? Never. We're going to see a green flag finish here, uh, and it doesn't. It, there's not three strikes. We just keep going. If we need four or five strikes to finish this race under green, they'll do it as Frank's coming on pit road for service. Frank Kibble, the 55 of Cody Coughlin there as well, but there's the Menards Toyota coming to the attention of the Wintron crew. The one good thing here is uh, it looks like all four tires are kind of pointing the same direction, Rick. So, uh, you know, beat the body back out, and, and Frank, uh, if he can stay on the lead lap, can get a good finish out of this and maybe even pick up a spot or two. At the moment, still shown on the lead lap. Spencer Gallagher, we were talking earlier about the long green flag run. It looked like Schrader was headed off into the sunset to grab the checkered flag. Two cautions in the last 15 laps. You know, yeah, we, we saw almost 200 laps of uh, green flag running, and all that just got thrown out the window. We got Kenny Schrader in the fourth spot right now, but right now we got the 98 car, the fastest car all day on short runs, sitting in pretty and on the pole position with two tires to go. So this is going to get real interesting. I don't think I'm going to have to go out on a limb too far to say we'll probably get a little caution. <laughs> yeah, that, that's, I'm going to go ahead and call that one a distinct possibility. All right, the Menards Toyota on pit road. Dick Berggren, a lot of damage on that race car. Uh, there is a lot of damage, but you're right. What he had done, Kimmel had driven around the racetrack a couple of laps just to get a feel of the car. It had obviously felt good enough for him that with tires put on the one tire, actually put on the right front, and they beat the car out, uh, got the sheet metal out of the tires and out of the wheels. Kimmel's back out again. Points mean everything to him. He has won more championships here, 10 of them, than anybody else in the field, and he certainly has his eye on another, even though the beginning of the year has not gone well for Frank Kimmel. We've talked about his struggles, not winning a race halfway through, but they're showing him the black flag right now on the 44 car. Kimmel able to stay on the lead lap, lights out on the safety car. Frank's going to have to come back to pit road. He's third in points without a win yet. Still has a shot at winning the title this year. Certainly, he will not be able to take the green for the restart. I think that black flag might have been he went a lap down on pit road and, and tried to get it back passing the pace car. Here they come to the green right now. Another rocket start for Mason Mitchell. Five laps to go at Winchester. The four of Jones on the inside. Mitchell in the 98 on the outside. They're side by John side. West in the Townley wall. in the 15 gets the wall coming off. No two. caution. Yellow will stay in the flagman's hands. We're side by side. Here comes Justin Boston and then Schrader along with Enfinger wanting to settle this one in the late laps at Winchester. To the bottom is Boston. Kimmel still out there on the backstretch. Mason Mitchell is your leader. Contact there a little bit coming off turn two with Justin Boston. Brandon Jones are working him over. Kenny doesn't really have anywhere to go. He's getting stuck. The 98 continuing to lead Mason Mitchell. Spencer Gallagher, you're starting to look like a soothsayer. You thought Mitchell would be a contender for this victory today. You know, I'm going to say something after the race. I'm not going to jinx it now, <laughs> but boy, oh boy, Mason is looking strong right this second. Two looking, to go. Looking for his first career victory. White flag will be out next time by Brandon Jones, the first time ARCA competitor. Second spot, Boston third. Schrader, who started on the pole and led so many laps, is fourth after losing the lead on pit road. White flag in the air for Mason Mitchell. Brandon Jones closed up there in three and four, possibly sizing up a last lap move. Frank Kimmel has to get the 44 out of the way. We'll see what happens. These two will settle it. Mitchell in the 98. Here he Jones goes. Four. Brandon Jones with the dive bomb move. Oh, he puts the slam on him. Gets Mitchell sideways, and Brandon Jones wow. is the winner. A last lap pass at Winchester for Brandon Jones in the Exide Chevrolet, your winner. Uh, and Mason is not happy short. about that. Here Tempers we go. Are short here. Mason yep, Mitchell there he looking goes. for his first career win. Says, hey, not that easy, young fella. 
Wow. Mason Mitchell, a young fellow himself. Wow. wow, what a finish at Winchester. All right, let's take another look at what happened. There's the dive bomb move by the four car. He drove it in there, and, and there we go. Eight tires are better than four, and Brandon takes the win. Wow, one more look here. Let's put you on board with Mason Mitchell as he gets rubbed on by Brandon Jones. Heavily rubbed on. Wow. We'll see if the ARCA Racing Series officials have anything to say about that. Brandon Jones takes the checkered flag. We'll sort it out when we come back to Winchester. ARCA Racing Series on CBS Sports Network is being brought to you by Menards. Save big money at Menards on all your home improvement needs. And by Calypso Lemonade. Naturally flavored lemonades produced with pure cane sugar, natural flavors, and real lemon bits. Back live at Winchester Speedway on CBS Sports Network, a first-time ARCA starter is a first-time winner. Downstairs to Dr. Dick Berger. <laughs> this crew behind him has been waiting for this. <laughs> Brandon Jones had never before seen this racetrack before yesterday, had never been to Indiana before he arrived here at the racetrack. This car is all beat up. How'd you win, given your inexperience here and what happened to you on the speedway? Man, that was incredible. You know, uh, as soon as we got here, we unloaded. The car was amazing, you know, and just got to thank everybody back at Turner Scott Motorsports. Excited for stepping on board for this race. And, uh, you know, I don't really like to win them that way, but, uh, you know, first ARCA race, and I uh, just had to go for it right there at the end, you know. Uh, so uh, really happy for these guys, and I got to thank them a lot, you know, for uh, getting it uh, running good. Tell me where the dents came from. How did that all happen? Yeah, you know, uh, Shane was saying, you know, stay on his left rear, stay on his left rear, uh, getting in the corner there. Who's left rear? Uh, Mason Mitchell is, you know, the 98. So uh, just trying to take the little air off of him maybe a little bit or something and get him a little free. And uh, he beat me off there, getting into one, and uh, so he had to make up for it in three. It was obvious he wasn't terribly happy with you. He didn't want you to drive to victory lane. Do you feel any guilt or any remorse about the drive? Uh, you know, definitely not. You know, these guys deserve it. We've been uh, getting closer and closer every single race, and now uh, we finally got it, so uh, it's awesome. You've had some experience on high bank tracks, Dover in the trucks. Was that important to your win today? Oh, definitely, you know, and uh, like the high banks, uh, it's also very fast at Dover and Bristol uh, as well. We've been to both of those, so I think that uh, played a big factor as well. First time start, first time win, undefeated Brandon Jones. One for one in the ARCA Racing Series presented by Menards. One more look at the last lap pass that got Brandon Jones to victory lane today. You're on board here with leader Mason Mitchell at the time. That's a body slam, Andy Yes, Ellenberg. he drove in there just unbelievably hard, and, and it made it work. It made it pay off. Wow. Made the 98 wiggle. Mitchell keeps it out of the wall, has to settle again for second spot. You know, uh, it's... Uh it's an amazing thing. It, it really was. I have no words for that. All right. We'll talk more about it when we continue. We'll hear from some of the other top finishers today at Winchester Speedway. Mason Mitchell has never won an ARCA race, but he has finished second in four of his last six starts. Can you put the disappointment in words? You know, I mean, it's not too, I mean, it's disappoint, disappointing, obviously, but uh, we'll be all right. We uh, had a good points day. We had a bunch of laps. We knew uh, who, who the real winner should have been. Uh, I mean, I don't have all the money in the world to fix my cars, so I can pass people clean unlike some others. But uh, it's all good. You know, we, uh, we had a good day. Fast pit stops, uh, beat everybody off pit road every time. Proud of the guys for doing that. Um, we, we had a really fast race car. We have a good package for Salem going in the fall. You know, I, you know, you got to keep your head a lot in these positions. And, you know, we just got to thank everybody that sponsors us, Thermal Technology Services, Muslimans, Applesauce, Florida Wildlife Foundation, my whole family. Uh, everybody's really upset, but, uh, you know, that's what happens when you got rich kids in the sport. Tell us about the incident between you and Brandon Jones. I mean, it's last lap. You, I mean, you got you to gotta do what you got to do. Uh, I passed everybody today pretty clean and passed everybody in one corner pretty clean. So, uh, I mean, I could have passed him easily. But, uh, you know, he's, he's done that late model stuff. Uh, usually he's laps down to us, so that was disappointing there. But it's all right. Uh, maybe have some few words, but it's okay. We'll go on to the next one and win that one. Mason Mitchell just turned 20. He has a lot of time to win a lot of races, Rick. Disappointed, though, certainly. And uh, you know what it's like, Andy Hillenberg, Spencer Gallagher. You get a taste of this. You think you're headed to victory lane, and things just don't work out your way. Great last lap drive for Brandon Jones, who seemingly came from nowhere. Yes, he did. Great adjustment on that last stop. That last caution put him right into position. Mitchell, Justin Boston, Ken Schrader ends up fourth after leading a lot of laps here today. Only three different leaders. 11 lead changes on the day. Carl Weber had problems, still gets 11th. Thomas Prater, 12th. Hesser, Josh Williams, who wrecked earlier, credit for 14th. 
Swanson, Will Kimmel, Lira, Brad Smith, Anderson Bowen, uh, who was wrecked on lap one with Kyle Weatherman. They have to settle for 20th and 21st. When we come back, we'll hear from Ken Schrader, our pole sitter in the Federated Auto Parts Chevrolet. We'll close things out for you with the ARCA Racing Series here in Winchester. More to come on CBS Sports Network. Welcome back to Winchester Speedway, Winchester, Indiana. The Hurs Chase the Taste 200, presented by Calypso Lemonade, live here on CBS Sports Network. The ARCA Racing Series, presented by Menards. Victory celebration for Brandon Jones a few moments ago in that Exide Chevrolet. Meantime, a driver who dominated, we thought was headed to Victory Circle, standing by with Dr. Dick Berger. Ken Schrader with a huge lead on the field. You didn't need that caution flag. No, it, uh, we, we had a tire vibrating really bad after the 120-something and uh, we needed a yellow then, and then we went that long and nothing fell off. I said, man, we don't need a yellow now when it got about 30 to go, but we caught a yellow with 15 to go. But, man, I had a good seat for the finish. Tell us about that. Was, was everything okay? I mean, you're as veteran a racer as there is in the whole world. Was the finish gentlemanly? The finish was uh, a lot of youthful enthusiasm by two people. But, uh, yes, uh, uh, Brand Jones did a, did a good job. He, he ran him plenty clean enough. It's the last lap. He You know, he didn't go in there and body slam him. He pushed him up. He got in the gray a little bit and wiggled. And, uh, man, you, you, you've got to expect that. I, th I thought they both did a real good job. How disappointed are you to not win this thing? I, I really wanted to stay in victory lane with Merle. Thank you, Rick. All right, thank you, Dr. Dick Berger. And Ken Schrader is smiling, but has to be disappointed not getting to victory lane here today at Winchester. He referenced Merle Bettenhausen, a brother of Gary, son of Tony, who was the Grand Marshal here this weekend on Old Timers Weekend. I want to thank Spencer Gallagher from GMS Racing, the driver of the Allegiant Chevrolet, the 23, for spending time with us today. He did a great job. you got a future in this business, kid. Keep it up. All right, upcoming for the Arca Racing Series, Chicagoland in two weeks, then Lucas Oil Raceway, Pocono, a big track, Berlin, a short track, a couple of dirt races, Illinois State Fairgrounds in DuCoin. Madison International Speedway will be live at 2 o'clock Central on the CBS Sports Network on that day. Andy Hillenberg, I can't wait. I'm ready for it, Rick. Let's keep on going. Absolutely. So join us on Sunday, August 24th at 2 o'clock for our next ARCA Racing Series telecast on the CBS Sports Network from Madison International Speedway. For Andy Hillenberg, Dr. Dick Bergman, and our entire crew, I'm Rick Benjamin. Thanks for being with us in association for ARCA. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports Network, the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. We congratulate Brandon Jones. We'll talk to you next time.